Ladies and gents, welcome to G Rex, and this is what's hiding at the most solitary place on Earth, the deep sea. But channel Kuzgazar in a nutshell. It's been a while since I did a Kuzgazar video, so I'm like, what the hell not? It's about deep sea. Sometimes the world feels boring. All the remote islands are visited, the Arctic conquered, the dense jungle discovered. Except there's still a place to explore: a wet, deadly desert, desert, where mysterious creatures live in total darkness, the deep sea. Let us dive down. Yeah. Deep sea is just ridiculous, basically. Uh, it uh, increases our fear, basically. You know, it's dark, uh, empty, in a way. And all the creatures inside are just terrifying because of water pressure and everything. You know, no sunlight, colossal squids, giant squids, whatever, you know, those a weird face with that teeth type of thing and eyes. Basically, it's deep, deep underwater. There is no light there. The pressure is immense. There's a place called Hadal Zone, and the creatures there look like this. And you saw them pictures. That is basically a nightmare right there. So yeah, basically nature, if given the extreme circumstance and extreme condition, creates terrifying creatures. That's what the deep sea is. This is gonna be a fun video. I took quite a few Kuzgaza videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist I'm going to for it. Kuzgaza uh, reaction, something like that. Uh, check out the playlist too, like Ori Sakas Reproduction, uh, Or Simplified, uh, CGP Grey, History. And yeah, let's do this one. Sometimes the world feels, hmm, boring. We've visited all the remote islands, conquered the Arctic, and penetrated the deepest jungles. But there is still one place to explore. It's a wet and deadly desert inhabited by mysterious creatures living in total darkness. The deep sea. Let's dive down. When we look at the sheer scale of the Earth's oceans, it's hard to believe that less than 2% of all biomass on Earth lives here. And of that small percentage, around 90% is located close to the surface in the first 200 meters. This is where we begin our journey. Here, light can still penetrate the water, which allows photosynthesis to occur. Phytoplankton, trillions and trillions of single-celled algae and bacteria, make up the foundation of the ocean's ecosystem, and they're consumed by bigger plankton, who are consumed by other species. The seafloor at this depth is akin to the Amazon rainforest and is often covered with coral reefs, algae and other sea plants that are home to a plethora of sea animals. So far we've focused most of our attention on this comparatively pleasant environment where we fish, swim, pollute and do science. So, Piano. let's dive deeper. Moving from familiar coastal waters into deeper, more remote waters, we eventually reach the edge of the continental shelf, where we're confronted with the continental slope, the long descent down to the deep sea. With every additional meter of water, light fades drastically, which means there are basically no more plants, and the seemingly steep continental slope begins to remind us of the surface of the moon. Looking out, we're faced by what seems to be endless open water. Let's leave the slope behind us and enter what's known as the Twilight Zone, the portal to the deep sea. Yeah. As we sink down further, the water pressure rises to deadly levels. The deepest scuba dive ever came in at 332 meters. At that depth, the pressure is like having 200 cars stacked on top of you. Yet we've only completed 3% of our journey. While this region seems pretty grim, many fish and other animals actually spend at least half their lives down here. During the day, it's a good place to rest and recover, hidden from predators in the vast, dark waters. Uh. At night, they can travel more safely into shallower zones to feed in the food-rich surface waters. Damn, really? In this transition zone... I didn't know some fish did that. They basically go to the twilight zone to you know, escape all the predators. And then when it's, I guess, you know, every, everything seems calm up there, they go back up there. Damn, I didn't know that. Between twilight and darkness, light becomes a powerful tool. Over 90% of the species indigenous to this deep environment use bioluminescence chemicals to uh. create light. 
They do so as camouflage against the very- Somebody needs to make a 4K video with that, I guess, while they go down there. It would be so awesome to see darkness, but all this fish and all this sea lives glowing like that. ...faint sunlight to send signals to potential mates or to confuse and scare attackers. Or they use light to hunt. Another tool for survival in the dark is teamwork. At around 700 meters, we encounter a colony of siphonophores. They can be up to 50 meters in length, but are only as wide as a broomstick. What is that? To attract prey, a colony creates a tragically beautiful bright blue or red light and deploys a curtain of tentacles filled with toxic needles that kill anything that comes too close. But most species living down here have to rely on a- What was that? I've never heard of that. Damn. An unlikely resource, marine snow. White, flaky stuff that constantly sinks from the surface to the bottom of the ocean. It consists of dead plant or animal parts, uh. fecal matter, shells, sand or dust. Even though this doesn't sound very tasty, without this crucial resource, life in the deep sea would starve. It's in this area that the most fascinating battles between two... Wait a minute, I thought, you know, where the light doesn't reach, obviously photosynthesis can't happen, but something like chemosynthesis happen, where the chemical and everything, you know, they feed on that, if I'm remembering correctly. I didn't know they were relied on, on the death things that come from the top of the sea and sinks to the bottom. Two unlikely enemies could happen. Yeah. Sperm whales hunt and attack giant squid the size of a house. Size While of the squid house. fight back ferociously, they probably don't stand a chance, but they do leave permanent marks on their killer's skin. As we reach 1,000 meters, deeper than the tallest structure built by humans, we need to be careful. This is the midnight zone, a place of utter darkness. A barely explored wet wasteland consisting of nothing but endless black open water. At these depths, it's harder for a human to take a swim than to take a walk in space. Finding food down here is really hard, so life had to adapt and become extremely energy efficient. Like the 30 centimeter long vampire squid that floats through the water without motion, with long and slender catching arms extended. They're covered in tiny stiff hairs which brush food from the water. This saves a lot of energy compared to actively catching food. For carnivorous fish, it's much harder to find food since living prey is quite rare down here. So the hunters have to get a perfect grip on their victim on first strike, otherwise it will escape into the dark. Many deep sea predators have several that face, that face is just weird, isn't it? it? It has weird bait type thing on it top, so, you know, baits other fish or whatever, and then just, you know, chomps on them, basically. It looks really terrifying. Sets of long and deadly teeth. Like the viper fish, which uses Ooh, its teeth. long fangs to trap even large prey and swallow it whole. Or the frilled shark with its impressive set of 300 teeth, which are curved backwards to hook their victims in their mouths. We sink further, below the 3,800 mark, as deep as the grave of the Titanic. We are now at abyssal depths. Here, life happens in slow motion. Preserving every last bit of energy is crucial for survival. Everything down here hovers motionless or swims in a slow, elegant fashion. The only time the animals living in this zone move fast is when they have to escape danger. Like the Dumbo octopod paddling with its ear-like fins or the grenadier's fish with its slow eel-like tail beats. At 4,000 meters, we finally reach ground again, the abyssal plain. It's covered in gray mud and rocks dusted with the remains of marine snow, which is consumed by animals like sea cucumbers, shrimp, sea urchins and sea worms. In some regions of the seafloor, small dark mineral deposits can be seen. These are manganese nodules. Deep sea corals and sponges use them to anchor themselves on the bottom of the sea. Though life is sparse on the deep sea floor, even down here there are oases. In the rift valleys, where tectonic plates are splitting apart, 
Magma heats up seawater and creates dark jets of water and minerals as hot as 400 degrees Celsius that form elaborate chimneys and towers. Extremophile bacteria use the minerals to create organic substances that are the basis for unique ecosystems. There you go. As we descend further... I guess that's what I was talking about when I thought, you know, chemosynthesis, I guess. You know, using chemicals as a food, basically. Damn. Uh, you know that uh, you know Spawnville and Giant Squid battle happened way up than I thought. I, I thought they would be really deep, but no, they are kind of up. We reach the deepest point of the abyssal plain at 6,000 meters. For most of the seafloor, this is as deep as it gets. But if we want to get to the deepest point of the oceans, we're actually only halfway there. Let's enter the Hadal Zone, yeah, the zone. underworld of the sea. It consists of long, narrow trenches that only make up around 0.25% of the oceans and are among the most extreme environments on Earth. Only extremophiles exist down here, like the ethereal snailfish that holds the record for the deepest living fish ever seen at around 8,000 meters. We see spiky and sharp black rocks rush by as we sink down to more than 10,000 until we reach the final slope. A trench inside the larger Mariana Trench with gently sloping sides that inframe a valley about 1.6 kilometers wide. This is it, the deepest point, the Challenger Deep, uh. 11,000 meters below the surface. The water pressure here is 1,086 bar. Taking a swim here is like having to balance 1,800 elephants on top of you. That is just ridiculous. 1800 elephants uh, equivalent of a presser. What does that even mean? That's way too much pressure, man. Damn. How is anything alive that is surprising? All these creatures can withstand that level of pressure. But even here, life has found a way to thrive. Next to sea cucumbers, white and light pink amphipods wiggle their way through the water. Their size is astounding. While their shallow water cousins are merely a few centimeters long, the deep sea version can reach up to 30 centimeters. Ah. Uh, and it makes sense, you know, creatures in deep sea gets really bigger. Obviously, they kind of, you know, uh, withheld so much, uh, you know, pressure like 1800 elephants or something. So they're being a bit bigger, it's not surprising. But still, this is not much of explored territory here. God knows uh, what kind of a different type of creature that we can't even think of lives there. This is just ridiculous. After, you know, certain, what, four, four or five thousand meters it's in, it just gets so dark. You know, there are fish who just, you know, really, I guess, you know, uh, weird looking, terrifying looking with those massive teeth. You know, they, they, they basically signal each other with, you know, with lighting each other or something like that, glowing. It's just awesome, you know, basically, you know, uh, you see, you know, them, I guess, using the headlights type of thing, this, you know, uh, bioluminescent or whatever they call the light themselves just to signal somebody or something like a threat is high or something. But at the same time, they also give away their position by doing that. It's just, it's just weird battle going down there. And there are other things floating elegantly through the water. Plastic bags that were found by scientists in 2018. What? Even the remotest place on Earth is not safe from human influence. There's nothing left to do now and our oxygen is running out, yeah. so we begin our ascent. After hours of traveling through dark nothingness, we finally see a glimpse of light. We arrive back at a calm surface. The oceans are so deep. There is so much of them. We owe it to ourselves and to our descendants to preserve them as well as we can. There are still so many wondrous things left to be discovered. So, you're all tingly now and want to go exploring. Why not start off with some juicy science? You can use our friends from Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, but go to brilliant.org for slash nutshell and support this channel. Uh, deep sea is awesome for the fact, for me at least, that in the extreme conditions, uh, the creatures that come up like that 
all that weird looking terrifying looking uh, all these gigantic creatures tells us one thing that life that we know of here basically gives us idea that this is what life should be and this is how life is possible but deep sea tells us that in the extreme environments life can be you know uh, completely different than we think of so uh, in the universe basically in certain planets uh, wherever there's deep uh, oceans and things there could be life that we can't even think of you know life surviving on i guess you know uh, chemosynthesis or whatever and all the different type of life that we can't even process right now hell we don't even know what different type of life there could be right now in deep sea it's not much of explored yet but those giant squids the big as a house giant squids and that sperm whales and things like that so god knows what kind of gigantic creatures are still there i don't know they could be somewhat smart so they you know whenever we try to explore it they avoid us or something i mean that's a bit out there but it could be who the hell knows I mean, you know, whales are smarter, so why not? But yes, in the universe, there could be creatures that we can't even think of. And this deep sea basically gives us evidence like this is possible because all these are just terrifying creatures. You know, if you go years ago when we didn't know about deep sea and any, told anyone and saw them pictures like this kind of creature exists under the ocean, they would be surprised and they would even laugh it off like, come on, you're joking. But no, they exist. Damn, this was an awesome video. Alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction, there's a link in the description, check out the castle playlist, check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.